Welcome to Bob's Radio Cafeteria. You can find me facebook.com slash Bob's Radio Cafeteria. And today my guest is the one, the only Robert Fleischman. Robert, are you there? Yes, I am. I have my uh, cafeteria tray already to load up. <laughs> I'll have the mashed potatoes and uh, <laughs> corn. Yes. <laughs> Roast beef, please. <laughs> Absolutely. Anything for you, Robert. Now, Robert, let's tell the people where they can find you on the Internet. Well, they can find me on um, robertflashman.com. And uh, you can find uh, the sky at theskyofficial.com. And I have an art um, uh, website, which is robertflashmanart.com. Now let's talk about that art. I really, I love collage. I really love it a lot, and um, I love your art. I love it. I love it. Love it Thanks. so much. So, tell me, how long have you been doing art, and what made you finally, you know, to say like, you know, what, I'm going to kind of make this a, a thing. Well, I've I've been doing um, collage ever since I was like 13 years old, oh, wow. and I've painted ever since then also, and. Um, I uh, sort of got influenced um, through the whole pop culture of the uh, the '60s, and um, I think uh, you know uh, Sgt. Pepper um, album cover kind of pushed me. Right. So uh, I started doing collage, and uh, I've done it ever since. And and just um, recently, I because of technology, you know, you, you can create a website now, and now I can put my art up there. So I've been doing it all my life, but just recently, you know, just started putting up um, a, a certain series of art on my, on the uh, robertflashmanart.com site. Yes, and again, you can find that on the internet, and it's it's really cool stuff. My friend Stephen Ternillo is a huge fan of yours, who's a friend of mine. He loves... He loves your stuff. Yeah, uh, I've seen his stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he's, he's, he's more he's more computer generated images and stuff like that. Where I kind of find a lot of found images and then you know cut out yeah. certain um, things out of them and then um, and then arrange them with other um, images. So you know, obviously collage. Do you have uh, Do you have like a you know favorite artist? list you know everybody has the old their all-time favorite. oh yeah um well I, I i just i've always kind of um had this P- picasso mentality I, I always loved picasso i've i've read a lot of books on picasso i actually went to um Veralise where he used to live in france oh, wow and um and checked out his house that he had, uh, this villa. And he had just, he had died maybe like a year or two um, before I had um, well, I was there. But um, he actually um, lived in um, Verlise in uh, France, and then he had a um, a, uh, a, 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 a cl- uh, like a foundry that he used to work out that, that, uh, that they used to make plates and and ceramic bowls and everything. And he would go into that factory and, and do his work in there and, um, and and do ceramics. So if you ever look up Picasso ceramics, um, you'll see just an amazing um, pieces of work that he's done. And then one time I was uh, at a friend's uh, shop in uh, Hollywood, and he uh, it was called Fat Chance, and they sold a lot of, furniture and, and um, uh, like deco furniture and, and um, furniture from the 30s and the 40s and the 50s. Anyway, they had just gotten back from a, a real, um, an estate sale. And um, I went in there and I was looking around and I saw this plate. And I'm looking at this plate and it looks like a Picasso plate. Oh and I God. turned the plate over and it says Madura, France, and oh, that's where wow. he did the work. So I, I went to the guy. I said, "Hey Jeff, um, how much do you want for this plate?" And he goes, "Oh, you just got it from the estate sale, um, uh, eighty bucks." And oh. I said, "I said okay." I said, "Just hold it on for me, and I'll come back with a check." 
So I drove home, got a check, wrote it out for 80 bucks, gave it to him, and boom, it was real. It was a wow. real Picasso plate. Do you still and have it? I, I, I don't have it anymore, and I wish I still had it. But at the time, I, I, I sold it for like around uh, 43 grand. Wow. But you can at least say that you owned a Picasso. How cool is that? Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I wish I hadn't had to sell it. I mean, I was kind of put in a situation where I had to sell something. Yeah, and, of course. And then, and then, of course, you know, three, d- three days later, I get this big check in the mail. So I could, and then I tried to buy it back, and, um, <laughs> and, and he, wouldn't, he wouldn't sell it back to me. Aww. And, you know, it was just one of those deals. But <laughs> it was a pretty incredible you know, situation. I'm looking at his ceramics right now, and they're really cool, and they're really beautiful. They're yeah, really, well, he did. The one that I had was this, was a, um, a plate. And um, you know how uh, cake decorators get the, the, um, the, the frosting, and they, and they squeeze those tubes? Yeah, yeah. And they decorate on them? Well, that's what he did, but he put, he put ceramic, you know, um, oh, wow. clay in it. And, and did it that way, and he, he would draw on these plates that way with with it. And Look so at I, the one I have was done in 1943, I believe, and it was a, a fawn. A wow! Mythical, so it's really mythical. early. I mean, yeah, it was really early. I and love these was, owls. I'm looking at these owls too. They're yeah. really cool. Yeah. There's a couple that look like Frida Kahlo. There's one that looks almost like Frida Kahlo. This <laughs> is kind of. I don't know if they ever crossed paths or anything like that, but this is well, one. they knew they knew of each other, uh, yeah, uh, definitely, and they probably did meet at one time when I believe she was lived in Paris for a while, Frida Kahlo. Um, yeah, she was uh, pretty amazing, a surrealist, oh, absolutely. you know, and you know, um, Edward G. Robinson was a big uh, collector of her. her mean the you dirty rat, you dirty rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh he, wow. Yeah, yeah he was. Um, he was a big uh, supporter of her art. Oh, that's cool. I never knew that. Hey, they learn something new every day. I love it, especially yeah. pop culture stuff. I love it. Yeah, and then, you know, she was married to Diego Rivera. Of course, of course. And um, and uh, there's a really beautiful Diego Rivera that's owned by Cary Grant that I know. Oh, so the estate, the, the, either his children or... I don't know if he had children. Yeah, it's at, um, it's actually hanging at the Pasadena Art Museum, I believe. Oh, cool! So when he passed, it was all given away. Do you have um, Do you have any other influences that you really draw from? Uh, pardon the pun. Um, well, I used to. I really like uh, Henry Moore, an English oh, cool. uh, sculptor. Oh, cool! Do you do any sculpting, or is it just mostly? Yeah, painting? I do. Scu- I've I've done about I've done about five pieces. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, you know, you you go and um, you go look at a big pile of uh, alabaster rocks or marble rocks, and you kind of you you look at these raw pieces of rock there, and um, you just kind of look at them like you would look at the 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 clouds up in the sky, and you go, God, that cloud reminds me of a rabbit. Looks like a rabbit or whatever. Yeah, and right. then you grab that you grab that piece of rock that looks like a rabbit, sort of, and then you. You you just punch out what doesn't need that that doesn't look like a rabbit till it looks like a rabbit, and um, <laughs> so yeah, it's really great. You know, you pick like eighty pound um, piece of rock, and then you get your two pound ch- um, you know hammer, and uh, you got your chisels, and you just start whacking away. And then you still and you feel buff at the end because your muscles have grown. Oh, you it. can yeah, you can get fatigued too. You, yeah, you know. it sounds like it's a lot of fatigue doing that, but um, yeah, but you enjoy it, and that's the most important thing, of course. Oh, I love it. It's just you know, it's it's the silent art where you know music is more of a <laughs> yeah. Well, you're an artist. I mean, sculpting, that's the thing. Sculpting it's in your sound, blood. you know. Yeah, you know. exactly. It's in your blood, Robert. I mean, you know, yeah, it's it like, is. It's you know, you curse. can't just. You know, you can't just be like, okay, I don't want to do, I don't want to sing anymore. I don't want to do art. You're always going to do it because once you're an artist, you are an artist. Right, right. And you do it, and you do it very well. Now, speaking Thanks. of art, let's, uh, the sky, what's going on with the sky? Well, the sky right now <clears throat> is on the back burner in the sense I'm just writing the new album. Great. 
and um, I'm just accumulating as much uh, as, as many songs as I can. Um, I don't have my my studio all set up anymore because I'm I'm uh, kind of uh, in transit living wise. So I I, I just use like a little tiny um, uh, tape recorder. Oh, cool! Uh, digital Old digital Love tape it. recorder that uh, I can put in my pocket practically. It's the Boss MR80 or something like that. Smart. Anyway, it's um it's a eight track recorder about the size of a small tablet and um and that's what I use and it has all the boss um guitar sounds in it and it has a drum it has a drum program in it also and so cool. it um it has two stereo condenser mics and it's just a micro studio so I just kind of have been doing everything on this micro studio uh format Awesome. So it, technology, what a wonder, huh? Jeez. I know. I mean, you could. I mean, if you had that back when Elvis was making records at Sun, oh I mean, you would just like. <laughs> oh my God! Imagine. imagine. Yeah, I mean, it's incredible what you can do. I mean, you got a you know virtual recording studio in your back pocket, basically. Now the and I've, album, and I've used I've used that before. Uh, I've actually done vocals on it and actually transferred the vocal that I did onto Pro Tools, and that's what I do. Really? Wow. Yeah, I'll 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 just use I'll just do kind of like a, um, you know, a, a sketch, and I'll and I'll um, dump it onto Pro Tools, and then I I'll keep some some of the parts, right. and I just build on it sometimes, and sometimes I keep. I keep the vocals that I've done with it too, and I like the sound of it. It has a you know distinctive sound. So, so on some um, on some, on one of the Sky albums, there's actually yeah yeah um, yeah um, a majestic or the first one or both on on the on uh, let me see on majestic on yeah. majestic that's so cool. Which of yeah. course you can find both albums actually out of stock. The first album's out of stock, uh, right. but Majestic you can buy at skyofficial dot com. Just go to merchandise and you can find it. Right, exactly, and and uh, I'll autograph those. Yeah. And I'm no longer right now um, on um, Spotify or uh, Pandora. I've pulled all my music off. Why is there is a reason you want to discuss or just just? Well, because um, well, I'm going to. Um, I, I'm I'm doing a, I'm going to be doing a licensing deal in uh, throughout Europe in each oh, country. Oh, cool! So I had to have all my um, digital um, music uh, off off the board so I could make a deal with these people. Oh, but and it'll be then, back though it, eventually. Yeah, it will be back. Yeah. Eventually. Oh, that's good, good, good. I'm glad to hear you're getting a licensing. Now, speaking of which, do you still do? Um, do you, are you still interested in do? Because I know you did uh, music for uh, that '70s show and SpongeBob SquarePants. Did you? Do you still think about doing like, you know, ambient scores or you know stuff like soundtracks or TV or anything like that? Well, y yeah, I would. I mean, I I'm still always interested in doing those, but it's just that those opportunities aren't always you know come to me. Right. So, but if somebody came to me, I would be more than happy to you know jump in in the pool again and, and do that. Um, but um, the, the stuff I did, the, the stuff on the 70s show, a lot of people get that misconstrued because I had, I had um, um, Wheel in the Sky was on the 70s show. Gotcha, which you, which so, you uh, wrote, yeah. Yeah, which I wrote, but so I didn't actually, you know, do a score. Actually, you know, who did uh, music for, I think, the 70s show? Cheap Trick oh, has a theme song. I know that. Yeah, and uh, or what's what's another one? Um, I think Vinny played on on. Oh yeah, he played on Happy Days. He, oh, that's right, ha Vinny Vincent. Yeah, he he was like uh, yeah, because I remember reading an interview where he would be like sitting on the set of like Joni Loves Chachi or something like that, writing music for whatever. And then you did right. this. You did the pilot episode of SpongeBob SquarePants, which you know, yeah, was cool. yeah, I did. I did have the opportunity to do that, but and what that about was, the? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. But that that was a situation where um, they had they had the uh, the original person that was doing the music for that somehow yeah. wasn't happy with his contract, and so he he bowed out for a while, 
and then I got involved, and then the agent for the guy that was originally doing the music came back into the scene and, and did this whole number with him, and so that kind of got pushed out of that thing Aww. because of that. But I got to do the pilot, which is the pilot which was um, what they gave to me to, to do the music over. And so I did this music on, on, the, on this pilot, and, and then uh, Nickelodeon had the, you know, the music and the pilot and all, everything, and I think they showed it to, to the other guy. And he took some ideas of mine and, and elaborated on them like, <laughs> you know, everybody Yeah, does. I've, I've, but that feel. It was, but it was, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I'm flattered when people steal, <laughs> but yeah. at the same time, at the same time, it was a situation, a Hollywood situation, where you know he had an agent, I didn't have an agent, so mm. I had nobody battling for me or or mm. anybody ping ponging, you know, ideas with me and or anything. Well, we so, know that Robert, and that's all that matters. The cafeteria, yeah, you know, and and it's it's just the way things happen. But I, you know, the, the people say, oh yeah, you were involved in it. I was. That's the only extent of it. It wasn't anything else that other people might think was how I was involved in. But that's still pretty time. cool, though. Still really cool. Yeah, I mean, I was asked to do it. It was great. I got to go to Nickelodeon, and it was really a cool building. They have like their own miniature golf course. Wow! And when you walk in, and they got their own little basketball and court, and they have all these like red. They have like yellow brick road and blue brick road, and they all go to different departments in oh, that's so Nickelodeon. Cool. And they got like you know their own little restaurant in there where you can order anything you want, and they got their wow. own cappuccino bar and ice cream bar, and you know it's just everybody's dressed in Hawaiian shirts and everything, you know. So yeah. it's, it's it's a cool environment. I heard Google's the same way uh, that their yeah. their their, establ- their building is like pretty amazing and yeah that's in uh, San Jose yeah not that far from here yeah about forty minutes from here yeah they're they're uh, ooh, they they take care of their employees now you also did two ambient scores can be um, on kinetic kinetic phenomena yeah I did two a- a- ambient albums yeah uh, kinetic energy and uh, electric raindrops. What's what's the uh, what's the story behind that? Well, I had um, I had this like I had a, like a fourteen track recorder, mm-hmm. and um, and I did those before like the, the electronic music got all its re- recognition. Right, right. So I, I I did those long long time ago. Are they and, still available um, or no? They're they're they're. Well, they are. <laughs> They are will be available soon because oh, um, cool. everything I have right now is in storage. So all the ambient uh, CDs, everything I have is in storage. I can't, I can't, I have no access into it until I decide where I'm going to live. And um, oh, right, right, because you're in the middle of moving and yeah. all that. Yeah, right. Gotcha. But once you so, find another place, watch out, world, because you're going to be loaded <laughs> with a bunch of Robert stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna have a lot of stuff available to me to to, to um, you know have people purchase if they like. Now the sky is it still the same band members? Still the same guys that are in the band, or is there? Have yeah, been- yeah, it's still all the same band members. We've only just um, our Andre, bass player, Steve, uh, Ryan, and 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 Brady. Yeah, 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 and Brady, and then we our bass player has switched, so we have a guy named John Sullivan. Oh, okay. Who's playing with us? Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Cool. Yeah, and of course uh, you can Steve, find all those. Steve Barber had a uh, had twins, so that was it for bye. <laughs> <laughs> so, but and you can you can listen. Obviously, you can listen to the records, and there's videos on YouTube. Just put in the sky like boomerang and all that stuff is right. all on YouTube, so you can watch it. Yeah, and Jerry um, Jerry Moore did the uh, videos for us, which he did a great job. Hi, Jerry. Hey, I wanted to ask you, so um, when you got into, how old are you when you got, uh, you know, not not when you started listening to music, but when you decided you wanted to be a singer, how old were you, and uh, what, was the, what was the, you know, the situation behind that? Um, I guess I was around, um, I just kind of turned 13, I think. So like 20 years ago. 
<laughs> further than that. <laughs> Let's look at it this way. I can I, I, I can get uh, senior discounts for the movies now. <laughs> wow. Well, you look good for your age, my friend. I'm not just saying that. So you were around oh, 13 years that. old, so was a bunch of friends got together and... No, I... Um, I had a cousin who was eight years older than I, and he was into the whole British invasion. Um, Christmas would come. He would uh, he would give me, you know, I got like Meet the Beatles, and, and oh, I wow. got, uh, you know, the first Kinks album, and I got the first Rolling Stones album, and, and I, wow. got a, a, I got a Yardbirds album, and... Uh, and those, you know, that's what I listened to and, and listened to. And then um, also on, on during that Christmas, I my parents gave me, just out of nowhere, just gave me this little tape recorder. Oh, cool. So it was like this Norelco tape recorder with two little tiny reels of tape. Yeah, 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 know? yeah. Oh, those are so sweet. With a little tiny microphone, you know. Yeah, so, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So I would... Um, I would I would listen to um, the records that I received, like Meet the Beatles, I'd, and I'd go in the living room where the stereo was, and I would listen to my stuff, but I could never listen to my stuff in my bedroom, so I figured out, well, I'll use my tape recorder, and I'll just tape everything um, you know, in the living room, and then I can go in my bedroom and turn on and listen to the whole album if I want, you know? And I would sing along with them and stuff like that, and then one... One day I decided when my parents weren't there, I turned on the stereo, you know, put on the Beatles or whatever and, and, you know, crank it up and then turn my tape recorder on and start singing along with it. And, and eventually, I, you know, to like, to like almost blend into to the songs. Oh, wow. Were you doing, so, is that how you started to learn harmonies and stuff like that? Too? Yeah, I mean, that, I just kind of, that, I, I would, you know, blend into the, those records. You know, sing and blend in, and um, and that's how I sort of that's how I got my ear, you know, to be in tune, and and um, and, and I, I did this all the time. So I would have all these little tape recorders with me singing on, you know, you know, Rolling Stone song or a Beatles song or a Kink song, Animals or whatever. Yeah, and I would just, you know, I heard myself singing and I I thought, well, I can I can blend in. It sounds pretty good. And then I kind of dropped that for some time and then I met a kid in um elementary school that played drums and he was into music and so we we had a great friendship and um he uh he 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 knew uh some players in Torrance. That's where I grew up and he knew uh Dave Pack who was um, the guitar player and, and main writer for the band Ambrosia. Oh, wow. That's how much you feel. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so so he would, they would have garage, you know, band uh, practice, and I used to go there, and um, eventually I, I, I got enough balls to sing on, you know, grab the microphone and sing. And... Wow. Um, and that's kind of that's how that then that, that hat happened, and then um, I just got the bug after that. How did now, you know? did you know early on? Because your range is really amazing. I mean, you can hear you know with the and with Journey, and then of course with Vinnie Vincent and on the soul stuff. Did you when did you realize you could hit those higher range notes? I mean, because it's not something that every singer can do. Um, I guess when uh, Led Zeppelin and no, actually. Actually, um, I would sing, and people used to compare me with uh, Rod Stewart. With the small, when he was with the Jeff Beck group, or, or with just, a like, Small so Faces, or, or small all, faces. all that stuff. Yeah, so yeah. that they would kind of like you know pin me there, and then when Zeppelin came, it was like it was like oh you know you sound more you sound like Robert Plant you know so it's always been you know people trying to put you in a box, which is of you know, natural. And uh, and flattering too, and, yeah. um, and and I used to sing along with the Zeppelin r- records, and and that's when I really felt like, yeah, I can do this, you know, I can sing just like him, or or I would sing. <laughs> Before that, I used to sing along with Aretha Franklin. <laughs> oh wow! So that gives you the soul of the voice, and of course, Aretha is one of the greatest singers of all time in my yeah. Opinion. And then I used to sing in her same key, you know. Wow. 
which is not no. an easy thing to do. You know, if you don't, have, you know, I mean, that's that's because that's really pushing a register right there. I mean, yeah, but it was, um, you know, it felt natural to me, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a big strain or a big, you know, step. So or, how did it? How, so so we so you're singing in local bands. How did how did the journey thing come about? Where I mean, I'm sure you've um, answered this so many times, and I'm, I'm right. But the I just, journey just thing kind of clue listeners. Yeah, the journey thing um, happened when I was moving out of a um, an, uh, out of an apartment, and uh, I had forgotten to give the key to the landlady, and uh, I got out of my car, which was packed up with my stuff. Right. And it was a small car. I had an Austin Healey Sprite, a little sports car. Oh, cool. <laughs> I, I, didn't have, I didn't have a lot of stuff, obviously. But anyway, I, I, I got out of the car, and I found this playing card on the floor. Right, right when I stepped out of the car, there's this playing right. card. And it, says, yeah. and it said, um, um, it, it said Continental Airlines, and it was, um, the, it was the, um, the Queen of Hearts, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or the Queen of Diamonds, I think. I can't remember. But um, I should get that straight. But anyway, uh, I, I had a friend, uh, a girlfriend, that used to, used to read cards, like playing cards, like turret cards. You yeah, know, yeah. Tell your future with them. So I, I just, you know, I knew her, and I, rem- and I used to, when I'd run into her, I'd tell her, I found this card, I found that card, and she'd tell me things. Anyway, I had the card in my hand. I put it in my back pocket. I go and knock on the door. And as I'm knocking on the door, upstairs, my phone is ringing. So I run up the stairs, I open up the door, I answer the phone, and it's a, um, a booker um, from Chicago. And he had gotten my number from um, a manager that I knew in, in uh, Hollywood. And so he, um, he said, hey, would you be interested in coming into Chicago? Uh, I, I have these five bands that I'm booking, but we're looking to get a lead singer for, for them, and someone like you would really kind of help the situation. Would you be interested? And I was, you know, I had nowhere to go except, you know, I was probably going to move in with my parents for a while right. and until I got myself situated. And, um, and I said, sure. So he said, great. I'll book you a, a flight on uh, Continental Airlines, and uh, we'll see you. <laughs> so I went... I went to Chicago. Um, I checked out five of these bands that he had, just, you know, told me, and I picked one of the bands, and I played with them for um, about six months or eight months, and then I got a phone call from a gentleman, uh, Barry Fay, who was a big um, music promoter in um, in Denver and throughout the United States with uh, Bill Graham. He yeah. and Bill Graham kind of cut up the United States like a pie, and and Bill would take the East Coast and and part of the West Coast, and and um, Barry got the the mid Midwest and all that. And so um, he asked me. He said he heard a demo of mine, and um, would I be interested in meeting with him in Colorado? So I said yes, and I gave the band a notice, and I went to Colorado. And um, got along famously with Barry, and um, I he asked me. I, I was staying at the Marriott Hotel, I think, and I was there for like a couple of days. And then on the, on the third day, he asked me if I'd be interested in doing a showcase for CBS Records. You're like, oh yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, so I said sure, and and I had I didn't know anybody in in Colorado. And I, I, in, I had two weeks to put together a band and write songs. So wow. I, put to be, I put together a band and I wrote seven songs. I rehearsed them. Um, the night that uh, I was going to do the showcase, um, it, it was snowing. And I, it, it, was, it didn't look good, <laughs> like anybody was going to come. Yeah, but... Yeah. but um, the people from the West Coast came, and people from the East Coast came finally, and the the, the show started a little late, but it happened. And then um, I, I did the showcase, and about three days later, I got a phone call from um, from CBS and asked me uh, if I'd come to Los Angeles for a meeting. And so I went to LA, back home, 
And, I was flying uh, like all over the place. I mean, it's yeah, crazy. and came, I went back home and I uh, had the meeting with um, the head of A and R and the president of um, CBS, and they told me had wow. they had this band called Journey, and um, they were looking to. Um, you know, get a lead singer for the band because at that time there were bands like Foreigner coming out and bands yep. like, you know... Um, uh, Ario Speedwagon and all that exactly. stuff. And uh, Boston and all that. Boston. So they all wanted to get in that, do that, you know, the lead singer, the, the corporate yeah. rock kind of formula, you know. Absolutely. So um, I, they told me about Journey. Uh, I didn't know anything about Journey except um, they jammed for like you know 15 minute songs. Yeah, because up to uh, then they were they didn't have a singer. They just basically were a uh, a fusion well, they had, band. They had Raleigh. They had they had Greg, uh, Raleigh, Greg yeah. Raleigh, and then and then Neil would sing too. But it wasn't like they had a front man. No. So, and, and and they had like 15 minute songs, you know. <laughs> yeah. So um, like, I I went. I, I went up to San Francisco and picked up my manager, and um, he he drove me to uh, SIR and uh, in San Francisco. Yay! And I walked in uh, this huge uh, sound stage, and uh, they had all their equipment all set up and PA, and it just looked great. And um, it looked very professional. <laughs> I felt like were I you try well, at that time. Were you still trying? I mean, I know you you had experience, but there was probably a part of you going like, "Oh my God, this is so." Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was like, you know, the the band that I was in Chicago was pretty well organized. I mean, they who were they a, called, by the way? The band uh, it was called it was called Rhinestone. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. Uh, great, great. I, I, didn't, I didn't care for the name, but the guys no, right. in, the, in Rhinestone were really good players, actually. And um, they had like a road. They had like two roadies. They had a truck. You know, it wow. was really well organized. So it was a great experience to be in that kind of you know to situation. feel to have it before setting. you stepped into something like Journey. At least you had exactly, some exactly. It, it, gotcha. it was yeah. And so then when I walked into Journey, it was just you know you know far far bigger step than what right. I was in before. And so. Um, we uh, and so in, I'm there in the studio, and we were talking and all that, and then eventually um, I had we had some lunch, and then eventually we just went up on stage and started jamming and uh, wow. jammed for quite a few you know quite a few hours. And, and then jam- um, and that would have been that would have been Neil Sean, Ansley Dunsbar, Ross Valerie, and Greg Raleigh, correct at the time? Correct. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Yeah, it was it was. It was incredible. I mean, I mean, you put, first of all, Ansley Dunsbar. It's like, oh my God, I'm singing with like a drummer that played with Frank Zappa. That must right. have been. Were you aware of that when you were on? Stage? No, I wasn't aware of anybody's history until actually. a little later. And then later, it's you know, oh, Greg Raleigh, oh, Santana, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, uh, Sean, and, then, uh, Santana. Dave, and then uh and then Ansley played with David Bowie, and, and he played oh, with that's right. um, yeah, and he played with. Um, uh, John Mayall, yeah, which was fantastic. John Mayall was on. Like the big blues guy and and the biggest blues you know influence in oh uh, yeah. England. Eric Clapton played for him. I mean, geez, yeah, everybody, everybody. And Ansley then went on to Jefferson Starship. What was he? What was he like? Ansley Dunbar. I got along with Ainsley. Ainsley and I actually hung oh, out. Ainsley, okay. Yeah, Ainsley and I actually hung out a lot and and uh, went out and stuff like that. And so Ainsley was always great to me. And and cool. uh, act, you know, uh, he's English, and yeah. um, and he's, he's always a gentleman. And it was you know always great to see him too. Do you and, still uh, uh, do you still run into him any time or? No, I, I actually believe he lives in uh, Las Vegas. Oh wow! Yeah, so. One of the great. Uh, the last people. time I saw him was when we got the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Right, and uh, yeah, that must have been exciting. So when you brought, um, when you, so did you? Is that when you brought in Wheel in the Sky and Any Time and all that? Did you bring it in then, or no? I didn't bring it in. We actually, I actually wrote those songs with with uh, Neil, or I wrote uh, Any Time with um, with uh, Greg Raleigh. Now, I remember you telling me in one of the interviews, the, I always said, what did you think of the version that they did with Steve Perry? And you said, it's good. He said, the only thing is you wish there was a bridge. You wanted a bridge in the song. 
Yeah, in uh, on um, on Wheel in the Sky. Yeah, I I I had a bridge, but they had already gone in and recorded it the song oh. the way it was. So I I had I, I, there was no way I could get a hold of them at that point. Was it? But I, I always thought that song would have been really great if it had a bridge, you know? Because yeah. I think songs, I think songs aren't songs unless they have a bridge, you know? That that kind of. I feel you. The bridge is important. You know? It is because it sets it. It sets it. It sets it up. I mean, you know. I mean, well, it kind of it kind of takes. It, I, it, you know, people. Sometimes it's like an abstract thoughts that are going through through and, and, and um, impressions that are going through the verses and then the and then the bridge kind of capsulates what you're saying yeah yeah you know exactly 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 I like that I like that description it's kind of like you're thinking oh but then I have this other thought well it kind of it kind of it kind of um, it, it gives you the the de- the definition of the of the the thought that is being conveyed abstractly in, in, in this sense. And, and, you know... But you're always... Puts, you're, puts it uh, anytime focus. I hear that song, I immediately think of you. You know, it's like, oh, it's Robert. Like, I always think about you, which is a cool thing. It's like, well, I know Robert wrote, co-wrote that, and he originally sang that. And it must have been really touching for you. I thought it, I thought it was a very classy move you know, first of all, they put um, on their box set, they put that the, the For You, which had your vocals on it. And I also, I mean, really classy was when they did the Hollywood Walk of Fame and they invited all Journey members and, and you were there. And I thought that was really cool. What, a night, I, I mean, what was that like when you got the call? Like, oh, by the way, you're invited. Was that like... Well, I got a... Um I got a uh, uh, actual invitation in the in the mail from um, from the uh, Irving Azoff. Um, oh wow! Management company, you know, very nice formal yeah. invitation, like a wedding invitation, and um, I have that still. I oh yeah. Have to frame it one day, and um, I was I was just. Uh, I was blown away. I was just, you know, something that uh, never thought would happen. Yeah, and, exactly. And 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 when it happened, it was just as surreal. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and, it's a great. Uh, I love the pictures from that. And it's yeah, just, yeah. I wish there. I I guess the Getty Getty images has all all a lot of those images, but I I have no access to to get to all, all of them. But I um. Uh, I'll never forget that day. I mean, um, it was just uh, so it, cool. when I was a kid growing up in Los Angeles. I would, Channel Five News (KTLA) um, would uh, always show, you know, someone receiving the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame during the right. newscast. You know, right? And you know, you're just watching these people get their thing, and and then all of a sudden, I'm. I'm there, you know, and yeah. we're standing there all together and with this, you know, Channel 5 there, Channel 7 there, all the, you know, major TV um, news stations are all there and filming and, and you know, taking photographs. And, it, and uh, I guess Johnny Grant is like the guy that, that uh, hands the uh, award out. And I'd seen Johnny Grant all my life, you know. Grow, especially he grew up down there, yeah. Yeah, handing out the awards to, you know, all these movie stars and pop stars and whoever, you know. And then to be standing right next to him, wow. you know, him handing me my, my, you know, my star, I'm just like, God, you know. It was just like, it was it was really touching. It was just like your life just passes through your brain, you know, in a chronological Yeah, I mean, and you were in the band for like a year, a year and a half, too. So that's what, to me, made it very... I just thought it was a really classy move to do that on, on Journey's part because they could have easily just been like, well, we'll just have, you know, you know, the famous lineup or we'll just have the current guy. You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But, no, you know, it's, it's like... When I got there in the band, I mean, like I said, it was a band that did 15-minute songs, and when I came in, it was like I, I just rearranged the furniture, you know, for them. Yeah, and, and there is was, videos, it, by it, the way, folks, of, of, of Robert singing with Journey. It's in Hawaii, right? Am I yeah. Correct? Is it? yeah, and it's At on the YouTube. Crater Festival in Hawaii. So cool. 
Now, after, after Journey, um, you, you did your solo album. Right, Perfect Stranger with, uh, on Arista Records. On Re- and can you give with, us any uh, memories? With Jimmy Iovine and Shelly Yakis, uh, Engineering. Wow. Well, just give us some memories of that. And you actually had John, uh, uh, John McVie from Fleetwood Mac played on it. I mean, what? Mm-hmm. Hello? <laughs> like, and this is like, what, that album came out, what, 1980 or 81? I believe it came out in 79. 79. Okay, so, so John McVie at the time is like a superstar with, per, with uh, Fleetwood Mac. Right. What, what was, how, did, how did he get involved in the project? Um, I was doing some of my... Um, I was working on the Al- Perfect Stranger album at um, the Village Recorder. Oh, in, yeah. Uh, Famous. In Santa Monica, which is where uh, at, at that time when I was there, um, Super Tramp was working there doing Breakfast in America. Wow. Um, uh, uh, I think I think uh, Steely Dan was finishing up on Asia. Oh, my um, God. Uh, and um, I think uh, Fleetwood Mac was working on... Uh, Tusk. Tusk, yeah. Wow. And um, and so I would and and then I had a girlfriend. Her name was Lenny Spent, and she's uh, like a, one of the handful of um, female recording artists. I mean, recording uh, engineers. Um, and she was she was my girlfriend, and she worked at the Village, and she worked on uh, Asia as a second engineer, uh, and um, she worked on. Uh, Breakfast in America, also. Oh my God! And uh, and did some work on um, some of the the Fleetwood Mac stuff. So through her and you know me hanging out there and and you know having chatting with different people there, um, that's how that kind of all came about. I got um, you know uh, McVie to to play bass for me. Wow! That was a really funny session because he came he came to the session just totally toasted. <laughs> well, at that time, Fleetwood Mac was notorious for their uh, yeah. consumptions of, and we'll leave it at and that. It, and it was, it was, uh, it was there. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, so 1979. I, uh, so it was, yeah, so I was, you know, punching him in here and there and stuff like that. But we got, the, we got it. And uh, then I had... Um, uh, the sax player from uh, Supertramp, he played uh, oh, sax wow. on on all the um, the cuts that have sax on the um, on there. Which I have to say, first of all, just a side note: Breakfast in America, in my opinion, is one of the most perfect sounding albums. Even if you don't not into the songs, in my opinion, just the production of it, it just, oh, yeah. I just, it just sounds so good. It just. I would, well, Peter Henderson was the engineer. There, was the engineer? And well, I, all credit to him then. Yeah, well, he he worked with Ken Scott. He worked with um, oh, he wow. worked with he, he worked with uh, um, George Martin. And, oh, well, um, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and George, George Martin kind of took him under his wing. And uh, but anyway, I used to go into the sessions, and when uh, Peter was there, like getting drum sounds for uh, Breakfast in America. Oh my God! So uh, you know, I would walk in periodically and see what's going on, how things are progressing. And so I, uh, that was really great, you know, got to do that. Now, now anytime I, I hear a Supertramp song, I'm going to think about you because I'm going to be like, wow, he was like there or, you know, Steely Dan or, or even T- the Tusk. Like, wow. Did you, did you run into anyone when you were doing that album and where you were at? Did you run into anyone else that was like – or, or Actually, let me put this as a two-parter, but it's kind of the same thing. While you were there, did you run into anyone else? And did you ever meet somebody where you were like, oh, my God, I cannot believe I'm meeting this person right now? Was there, you were awestruck. Huh. I always like to ask my, a lot of the guests, like I say, is there who – because who like, to me, it's always cool to talk to you guys. For me, this is like – like this means so much to me, and thank you again for being on the cafeteria again. But it's like, have you ever met somebody where you were like, "Wow, I can't believe"? Yeah, I'd when be- I was, um, what was it? It was um, Robert Plant. Oh wow! Wow! wow. When I was, uh, I was, you know, 
I was like 19 years old or something like that, um, I went to the forum. And uh, I used to go to the forum really early. And when they were loading up the trucks into, right. the, into the place, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I would, I would like walk down this big loading ramp, mm-hmm. and I would just walk through and act like I belong there. And right. I would just, I just would walk in and I'd hang out and I, I met Plant there and I talked to him and wow. he had a for a while and he introduced, you know, he. He asked me if I wanted to come in for a drink in the re- in the dressing room, and oh he God. walked into the dressing room, and he and he like walked in there, and and then he came back, and he just was kind of disappointed because at that time, um, I mean it's no hidden story. I think um, at that time, Paige and um, and um, what's his name, John Paul Jones. I think Joe. they were into the uh, into the big H at that time. Oh yeah, they were. Yeah, that's and it's, that is documented. So yeah, yeah. so he was. He kind of came out of the out of the dressing room and kind of like was complaining about it to me, <laughs> which was wow. Like, wow. Here you are, a nineteen year old kid. Yeah. So wow. uh, we just stood out in the in the hallway and just talked for a while, and and I got a pass and um, I watched Woo. the show. Well, it's also different back then. I mean, back then, it's like rock stars weren't as guarded as they are nowadays. You know, nowadays, it's like they've got an entourage of 50,000 people, and there's like... Oh, yeah. Back then, you could, especially the 60s, I mean, you could just go to a bar, and there's Janis Joplin hanging out, you know, like... Oh, oh. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I remember going to the um, the Rainbow when it was the Rainbow, and you'd see Keith Moon there, and you'd see oh. Bowie there, and you'd, wow. you know, you'd, you'd see... You know, share there. You see, you know, everybody there. Oh, it's so yeah. cool! You were there at the right time, my brother. You were. Just... Yeah, I was. I was. I mean, it's like with those T-shirts. Uh, I'm old enough, or whatever. I, I, saw, I saw all the cool bands. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now you went on tour for Perfect Stranger. Yeah. And, and um, you opened up a lot of. What were some of your favorite shows that you did opening up, or? Well, we I opened up for um, for Van Halen. Yeah, that's right. Oh my God! Yeah, I opened up for Van Halen. Um, was on their tour for for some Women and time. Children first would have been, or no, it was uh, Running with the Devil tour. Oh, the first album. So the very first album. Okay. I guess so. Was that was that the first album? Yeah, that Running on the, Running with the Devil is on the first one. Yeah. That's yeah, we were playing game. all these hockey rings and you know rings, and oh, wow. um, we were um, colleges and stuff like that. Any great Van Halen uh, stories? I'm sure you, have. <laughs> especially with David Lee. I mean, I'm sure. Well, or things that you wanted. Well, they, to... <laughs> all, everybody in the band was super cool to me. Um, they would stand on the side before they were, you know, had to get in the dressing room to get all ready for the show. Um, they would stand there and, and, and watch me pl- do like three or two songs, and then they would go get dressed. And, and But, you know, um, David would, never spoke to me or said hello to me or nothing, you know. He was, he was kind of a jerk to me in a sense. Oh. He would just kind of like shine me on. Screw- oh, it must the, have been a singer. Th- he must have saw how well you sang, so he probably felt intimidated. Who knows? Oh, I don't know. I mean, the guy, you know, at that time he was at his, you know, at his zenith. You know, I, I yeah. Mean, the guy. It, there's no denying the guy's like an incredible performer. You know. Oh my God, one of the greatest frontmen of all time. Yeah, he was a great performer, and 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 completely opposite of me. You know, I'm I'm not the circus chimp that runs and bounces all over the place, you know, anymore. <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, he was, uh, he was kind of a, a bit on the rude side to me, but, uh, I, um, that stinks. <laughs> so he had all these girlfriends that would, that he, that would come in to see them play and stuff like that. So I would, I'd be backstage or the side of stage and all these girls would be there and everything. And I would just like nick them. <laughs> <laughs> I'd nick him and take him into the dressing room. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be out of your girls for a while, and then <laughs> all uh, those days, then, Robert. That's right, and so that was my revenge to him. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm the singer, and I'm actually I'm not part of a band. I'm a solo artist. Oh, my gosh. 
Well, now, you, you, know. you then went on. Now, this is the thing I always think is really cool. A lot of people do not know this. And, of course, I mean, they know of the band. In the early 80s, Asia was a huge, you know, it was a band put together of people, famous people from other bands, you know, Carl Palmer from ELP, uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer, and blah, blah, blah. But you were actually part of Asia in the beginning. That, that to me, has always been very fascinating. Can you, can you uh, elaborate a little bit on that? Because that's something a lot of people are not aware of, is your part well, I wasn't of Asia. Part of, I wasn't part of Asia. I, I went, um, uh, Geffen Records sent me to England to, um, you know, it was another situation where, uh, like, CBS, hey, do you want to, you know, play with this band Journey, you know. Oh, so, so kind of like there. when they sent you to Chicago and all that stuff, kind of the same Well, kind well of. they sent me to San Francisco. San but, Francisco. But, I mean, like, the, before San Francisco, they sent you to Chicago, and there was, like, five different bands. But this was, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of those situations. So um, I, you know, got a call from um, John Kolodner. What Famous, I mean, oh, my God. A&R. One, yeah. The Kingmaker. The guy that and, who who is he overseeing? Uh, Aerosmith, well, he, he Chicago. Put, he put, yeah, he put Aerosmith back together and put him, got him back on the map, and and uh, and what White Snake and all that stuff, you know. And Cher, and I mean, just yeah, everybody. Yeah. 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 Anyways, so I, I had I was friends with him, and he uh, asked me if I wanted to go play with Asia, and he gave me uh, a cassette of the of the album of. The first one, uh, which was which was a, a demo, but the demo was basically the album. So I had this cassette, and I'm listening to it for like two or three weeks, and I'm just you know I'm digging the the thing. I mean, I I I Great always album. admired uh, John Wetton, you know, oh, yeah. with his his um his stay with um, King Crimson, and and yep. you know all the stuff. And and everybody that was involved in the band, I mean, it was just Steve Howe, monster. Yes, I mean, Jesus. I know it was just a, a room full of monsters. You know, some of the best players on the earth. You know, so I went. I, I'm listening to this, this this cassette deck. I mean, cassette, and I'm just listening to this music, and I'm really digging it. And and I'm, the more I'm listening to it, I'm just going. I don't think I'm suited for this. I mean, this is already done. I can't see myself you know, singing on top of this. So basically you, know? you were like, John, John Wetton sounds wonderful. Why would I? Yeah, I, exactly. Why, why want to have me in there? And, and it was just so tailored fit for him. It's like, you know, it's like having a custom made suit. And then all of a sudden I have to fit in that custom made suit. I'm not, it's not going to fit me the you know, same way as it fits him. You know? Right. So, but I went to England. I spent a week with them. Like, oh wow! So you did get to jam with them. Wow! Oh, I, I rehearsed with them and and did these songs with them and and towards the end of the week, I I told um, Peter Mensch, um, their their manager, I said I don't I I, I feel like uh, you know a pair of brown shoes with a tuxedo here. I just don't feel <laughs> I just don't blend in with this. You know I I I I, I, I you know it, it, this is John Wetton is. Asia, Asia is John Wetton. Yeah, you know, it, it just it just sounds so good. I mean, I just don't see myself in there. And, and very I just unselfish bowed out. You, by I, the way, I just, I mean, I just bowed me, out. To me, that's a very unselfish move. And also, that you did a music, a musician's move. It's like you looked at the music. You didn't think of yourself. You thought of the music, and you went, you know what? I would probably take away not to not to to exactly you. exactly. I, I mean, and I, I could applaud you for that, my friend. You know, and but now you were in a room go, though with Carl Palmer, Steve Howe, uh, Jeff, Jeff was it was Jeff Downs? Jeffrey Downs, yeah. Jeffrey Downs, and and John mm-hmm. Wetton. I mean, hello, <laughs> wow. I, know. I mean, I enjoyed it. It was great. And then when they um, they they came out and and when they toured the United States, I I, I saw them at uh, Santa Monica and hung out with them and. And uh, they played at Santa Monica Civic Auditorium, I believe. And I, I hung out with them, and um, it was great. They must have really, them, they must have really respected you big time for that too. Like, wow, what a like, this guy is like, I yeah. I mean, because you could have gone on and heat of the moment that you hear on the radio would not have been John singing; it would be Robert singing. But yeah, yeah, but I, I just couldn't see myself doing it, you know. 
Now, how about the band Channel? Well, how did that come about? Um, channel. Is that what channel it was, is? that going to be that thing? Well, Geffen Records called me and said to come on now. No, no, it was. Um, I after Journey, I was doing a lot of demos, mm-hmm. and um, I ran into a uh, musician in um, in L.A. A guy named Tony Berg. Oh yeah, and. and Tony later on in life became an A and R guy and mm-hmm. and worked with um, Michael Penn and um, and a lot of different you know bands. Right, Sean's and, brother, but, right? Or is that? Yeah, Sean's okay. brother, correct? Yeah, Sean. Yeah. And um, so um, I I would and when I did sessions I'd always call um, Tony to play guitar for me and he knew a lot of p- people and so um, through the people he knew and um we we put together a, a band and um and, or just went in and recorded these songs and the bass player uh, Tom uh Trey Thompson, um, Thompson yeah. he uh, was the bass player and he was friends with a guy named Larry Hamby who was with um Epic Records and oh, wow. um he was he was with him and he and he was good friends with him for years and and epic already kind of knew you through the c b s thing so well yeah yeah in a sense in a sense um you know yeah and and so um i guess trey played um the music the the stuff he was doing with me to with larry hamby and larry hamby was um very excited about it and then Larry Hamby's um, friend at uh, A and R guy at uh, CBS was a guy named um, um, oh boy Frankie oh God what's his name Avalon no I'm just <laughs> no Frankie Avalon um, <laughs> Benali no I'm just kidding I, just don't know I can't remember oh, damn it's horrible but anyway. Well, Frankie, I, he was the guy. He was the guy in Chicago that called me. Oh, the original. Later on, the original. The original. They said to come down, check out all these five exactly. bands. Exactly. Gotcha. Frank Rand. Frank Rand was his name. Frank Rand. Okay. And so he was part of A and R at Epic. So the two so of them got together and decided, you. yeah, he knew me. So they go, okay, let's give him a deal. So then they get they got us with this. They were trying. We were trying to find a producer. They wanted us to have a producer, but I felt like we could have done it ourselves. You know, we could have done it ourselves and 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 done the record in L.A. and did it under budget and everything. But we got involved with this this um this producer a guy named Frank. No, his name is uh, John Ryan, mm. and he John Ryan kind of used our budget to have a vacation in England. Oh, and so kidding. we ended up going. We ended up going to England, and now we had to, you know, pay for hotels. And then oh. we were we were recording at a place called Britannia Row, which is um, the studio where um, it was Pink Floyd's studio. Oh wow! So that's kind of so. Cool. Yeah, that was really cool. And uh, so we're recording at Britannia Row, and um, and and this guy is just this producer is just getting more and more horrible and he mm. plus he smokes cigars in the in the, in the and that's the not studio. good for you as a singer and that's not good for me and i told him please don't do that go outside whatever it just ruins me and makes me sick you know yes yeah, smells bad anyway the smell yeah. makes me nauseated i mean i get turned green yeah no i'm with you up. i'm with you and, and 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 also your vocals i mean it's not exactly good and, and exactly and and so he continued on doing that and i i got more and more like i hate this guy and then oh, on top of so it that already kind of put a sour feeling to the session exactly i wanted to boot him big time but on top of it he was a scientologist Oh God! Well, that just puts another spin on it, right? So, there. so there would be all these Scientologist books laying around, okay? Oh, I mean like the, then, Dianetics and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's fine if you want to do that, you know. Yeah, of course. If you want to stick your finger in a fan, you know, go ahead. <laughs> you know, so so then later on, his wife comes down to the studio, and she's yeah. this incredible. Beautiful redheaded girl yeah. that plays classical piano. Right. Well, little did I know that his wife is the daughter of L. Ron Hubbard. You're kidding me. 
No. Wow. So, yeah. So, um, wow. so she, I, 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 I became, you know, friends with her and I talked to her and actually got to go to, a, they, L. Ron Hubbard had an English, like this English mansion out in uh, Surrey somewhere. Oh, my God. So I actually went to the house. And Wait, was he there? Was, uh, no, he L. wasn't there. He's, he, he was, he's, he's gone. He's dead. Oh, he's dead by that time. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't, yeah. I, I wasn't sure when he died. So he, I guess what was happening was she and her, her brother, and they were all, had all this litigation stuff going on to get money from the estate and all that Go stuff. Go figure. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it was, it, it, and, 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 and it was just, um, it, it was an interesting ride, let's say that, the, the whole thing. And we ended up going, leaving Britannia Row and going to this place called um, Jacob's Farm, which is a, 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 like a big English mansion with a recording studio in there. And that's where... <laughs> it's uh, so beautiful, yes, though. Oh. oh, it was. It was beautiful. And yes, it did um, Lonely Heart... Oh, something oh the one, like, 90215 or whatever that album Yeah, they did that album there on a trident board there. Oh, wow. So we we lived there and recorded there also. And, um, and um, then when it came down to mixing the album, we had no budget. So the album just stood around, sat around for quite some time. And because he'd blown all our money. That's, you know, that sucks. Because here you are, you know, it's like here you are, this amazingly talented guy is being, you know, the record companies are lo- loving you. They keep offering you these gigs and, like, things just keep, you know, kind of falling apart. I mean, where, yeah. where are you, how are you feeling emotionally at this time? Are you getting frustrated with the music business? Are you like, Jesus, you know? No, I'm not frustrated with the music business. I'm just frustrated that, in, in in hindsight, that I should have had, I should have been more demanding and more putting my hands on the wheel and and taking the wheel away instead yeah. of letting other people driving my car into the ground, you know. Yeah. So and, that album, and, that, and, that, and that, that, that was that's deal. always been a big problem because I just don't, I don't come off. I sh- I should be a lot more demonstrative and just be like a freaking you know monster. But I, I, it's just not in me, you know. And no, you so These cool, things kind of cool these things kind of happen, and um, and then later on, you know, it look, makes me look bad, you know. Yeah. But when it really, I mean, it, it, it's, it's my fault, and it's not my fault, you know. No, it's and it's it's unfortunate because it's you know because really in the in the, the long run, it's like your fans of you are are being gypped because they. Or you know of the bands you're in, never get a chance. Now that does that album ever put out? Yeah, the album was eventually put out, and it was it was eventually um, mixed. And um, but how many years was, later? Like re- no, no, oh. it was months. It was months later. It, oh, okay, okay, know. so same time. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was this you know a couple of months you know passed by until it got mixed. But the guy that mixed it had no business mixing it. I mean, what I love I love the guy. I'm not going to yeah. say his name, Don't but I love name. the guy. Yeah. And uh, and um, you know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he had no business re- doing it because he had already he worked with Asia. No, not Asia. He worked with Steely Dan. He did work yeah. with Steely yeah. Dan. Um, and the last project before he came in with us, he it was a Frank Sinatra album. Okay, <laughs> so. Give me a give, give me a break, you know. I so, bet I know exactly what Sinatra it was a Sinatra album where it was like his comeback <laughs> album. It was like I, it was like he sings a song about L.A. or something. I forgot what the album. I know what album it is. It's got to be. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, he that was his last project, you know, that he he did before he jumped in with with us, and um, and then uh, eventually. The uh, the the uh, album was mixed in New York, and I had called um, the guitarist in the band. I'm not going to say who it is. You can look it up yourself. Yeah, but anyway, the guitarist in the band um, told 
uh, epic that he knew all the tracks and how everything should go, and uh, and that uh, he will go to New York to work with um, this engineer. And so I called up I called up his house, and his wife tells me, "Oh no, he left three days ago. He's in New York mixing the r- mixing the record. Aren't you there?" I'm going like, um, "No, I'm not there." You know. So after that, I just I just like you know put out both of my hands and flipped off, you know, the world. Yeah, the, and, the um, channel. I'm changing yeah, the channel. I, I'm changing yeah. the channel. Yeah, I'm changing the channels, correct. My daughter would be very happy she, when she listens to this interview. She, by the way, she'll be very happy about the Scientology part because she's, she's not that she wants to be. She doesn't want to be a Scientologist. She just She's just so fascinated how strange they are. So she will love that part about the Scientology. <laughs> so, so you got that. You got to see the, the L. Ron Hubbard. Uh, and you got to work in the Pink Floyd uh, where they recorded, so that's cool. Yeah, that actually, when at the at Britannia Row at Pink Floyd Studio, they had a huge room where they had a snooker table. Re- what? Yeah, like a you know big pool table, but in England, yeah, 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 snooker, yeah, which is like a a, a larger um, pool table, and uh, so they had this this room where they had this pool table, and I said. Um, when we were there, I said, has anybody ever recorded drums in here? And they go, no. I go, let's record drums in here. Oh, so, nice. So uh, we set up the drums in the uh, pool in table Row. pool table still in there, by the way? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was still in awesome. there. And so we, we set up the, the mics and everything, and, um, and then we all came in um, later in the afternoon after everything was set up with the drums and got all the sounds and we started recording. And um, within 20 minutes, we had the Bobbies knocking on the door. The, really? The police. The police. Yeah. Wow. And so they told us that we had to stop because the sound was leaking out into the, in, into the street. Wow. So um, we had to stop. Um, Britannia Rose said, we'll alleviate the situation. We'll take care of this. And so they had like four days. We were, you know, down for four days. But they were building, (laughs) this is funny, they were building a cinder wall, (laughs) a cement wall, (laughs) so that the sound wouldn't come out. So if you ever go to that studio, folks, and yeah, they, this wall, it's because of Robert Fleischman and the drums. They built the uh, wall channel. for <laughs> There we go. You're Mark and Sus- So Pink Floyd Studio, you had, you had an effect on that studio, Robert. Come on. That's yeah. kind of cool. Was there anything yeah. there? Was, there like, was, was, was uh, Richard Wright's piano there? Was there anything there left for, of Pink Floyd? Or? Um, no, there was just... Um, no, no, all their toys were were not their toys weren't there. But just but, the, um, just they, knowing what they recorded there is probably yeah. Great. But they had their whole big um, sound effects library there. Oh, so cool! So I I listened to a lot of stuff, you know, sound effects. Their sound effects library and you know certain things from from uh, Dark Side and things from well, the you, wall. Did you hear the did you hear the Paul McCartney? Because, you know, Paul McCartney recorded, you know how there's like t- voices on Dark Side of the Moon? I guess oh, yeah. w- Wings was recording at the same time, and Paul actually recorded some vocal thing, but because of, you know, contracts and, and record labels, they weren't able to use his voice, whatever they were going to no. use on Dark Side. No, or I never heard be- those. Oh, I'd love to hear those one day. I was, I was always yeah. Something so then, kind of similar to that is... Um, when I was recording the Perfect Stranger album at the record plant in New York. Oh, wow. Um, the record, they, um, wow. Down in the basement, they had this, um, this corner with a chain-link fence from floor to ceiling, and in that chain-link fence behind it was um, John Lennon's equipment. No way. Yeah, wow. so... Um, so I'm like I'm looking at it and you're drooling, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it and all that. And um, so one of the guy, somebody got the uh, key for it and opened it up for me, and I got to play with the uh, with Lennon's Mellotron, the one he used on Strawberry Fields Forever. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, or I don't know if it was for that. I mean, it was exactly the same one, but it had, uh, you know how a uh, um, 
a Mellotron works is a, it's all yeah. tapes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you you push the button, you know, you put your hand on a key, and and a sound would come out, you know, from the tape right. loop. And um, so I it had the uh, the Strawberry Fields flutes on there. Oh my it god! It had uh, the it had the beginning of Bungalow Bill with the uh, the uh, classical yeah. guitar going ding. Yeah, 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 yeah. From the that White part, Album, that, yeah. That, yeah, that was on there. Um, oh my god! You know my name was on there. Oh, which is a the Mambo album. band on there? Oh wow! Uh, oh yeah, that's right. Because then, because because then I know your name. That song goes on, and then they do that little like middle section where it's like, um, yeah, that's all. Know my song. name, like loungy thing. Yeah, exactly. And um, wow. And uh, what else was on there? Um, I so so so. What, it's easy to say that right there. You were drooling. <laughs> you were oh, it like, was oh, just my. like it was just great. I mean, I had. A smile ear to ear, you know. Because you're a, but, you're uh, like me, you're a huge Beatle freak. So it's like that must have just been like wow. Yeah, I mean, I I, I when I was a kid, I went with my cousin. Um, he took me to um, uh, the Hollywood Bowl, and I saw the Beatles at the Hollywood right, Bowl. Right, I saw you mention that, and then you you're friends with uh, one of Paul McCartney's guitar players, correct? Yeah, with uh, Rusty Anderson. Who I I saw Paul I've seen Paul twice in the last five years I saw him at the Hollywood Bowl I actually took a Greyhound bus all the way down there and then I saw him a few months later this was like 2010 2011 I saw him here in San Francisco well I'm in Oakland but across the bay in San Francisco I saw him at um, AT and T Park and I've always said this the band that he's had the last 12 15 years they are fantastic I mean they are just, oh yeah um, uh, they're just so you got so you got to see Paul. Did you get to meet Paul that night when you when you hung out with with, with No, him? I didn't get to meet Paul. That I, I um the last time I saw him was at uh, the Lollapalooza in Chicago. Yeah, cuz you just a couple, I know you posted a couple some of pictures. months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw the pictures. Summer. Yeah. And um No, but I actually did uh, uh, some artwork for um <clears throat> McCartney and gave it to um to Rusty to give to Paul. Oh, and wow. um but I was going to meet him, but he literally, um, he just kind of drove up to the backstage in a car and jumped out and went right onto the stage and then right off the stage into the car again and left. A la Elvis Presley, you know. Elvis yeah, was it was, the yeah, it was one of those. So I never got a chance to, but that was the plan. <laughs> Did you get to meet the rest of the band? Oh, I've, yeah, I, I, I've known the band for a, a bit. You know, I, I actually, uh, I actually, uh, uh, Brian, uh, um, the other guitarist. No. Yeah, yeah, the other guitarist, uh, Ray, Ray, Brian Ray. Yeah, and then there's the the keyboardist who's been with Paul since the when he. Yeah, I don't know him, him, but then, Abe, I I met Abe a long time ago when he was playing drums for uh, Lenny Kravitz for um, Give Peace a Chance. He's with, a uh, fantastic with, um, with uh, what's his name? With Slash. Yeah. Oh, Slash from Guns N' Roses. Yeah, so they, the three of them were, were cutting um, some tracks at a studio that I was at. Nice, not, not a bad uh, little session to watch, by the way. <laughs> no, it was great. I, 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 knew, I knew Lenny from the very beginning of his career. Oh, his first two albums, I absolutely adore his first two. Lit Love Rule yeah. and Mama Said are... Yeah, that's when, I, 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 that's when I, you know, knew him wow. and, and saw him a lot. But, um, so the, yeah. the next part of your career, let's go over this next part real fast because I know you're so sick and tired of talking about it, but, you know, I have new listeners now. This is a new uh, way that I do the radio cafeteria. The Vinnie Vincent part. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about pain in the ass. But, you know, I wanted to say, did, I sent you the link of the Bobby Rock interview that he received. Yeah. Did, did you listen? He gave you, he, he just talked you up so much. He just, I don't know if you got to hear it and uh, what he what he said about you. He just talked you up. Just really, really, ha you know, he just, how talented you are and how great of a person you are. And you just recently ran into him, correct? Weren't you at a show and you guys were together or? Yeah, yeah, we um I went to see him play with uh, Rita Ford. Rita Ford, that's right, cuz it's a picture of you Bobby Ro you Bobby Rock and Rita Ford. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And um I'll have to send you that picture so you can put it in your thing. I found actually I found that picture. So I'm going to oh, put okay, it on good. the it'll be, yeah, it'll you be can on chronicalize it, you know. 
Yeah, so because like right now when we're talking about this, on the, it's kind of a weird kind of thing to say, but like as we're talking about this right now, that picture will be showing right now on the video. Right. So well, you got um, Vinny, Vinny. Let's just let's get through that one real quick because I know this. I, I just I don't want to spend too much time because you've talked about this so much. Well, it's I, okay. So don't bad. don't worry about it. You know, all right. I think I appreciate. It. I just you know, I don't want to. What's there left to say? <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> um, what's there to say? Um, I think uh, Vinny is um, an extremely talented person and. Um, he has a good side to him. Yep. And um he's um he's always very caring about me and uh always uh-huh. took care of me. But uh under the same umbrella, you know, he has the has the famous tendency to sort of shoot himself in the foot all the time. Which he did with the invasion, he did with Kiss. He, yeah. Yeah, he did it with he does it he does it all the time, unfortunately. You know, too bad. He's but, become kind of an enigma now. Pardon? He's become kind of an enigma now because now the whole the, there's been the, like in the whole kiss circles, it's like where why he, like he doesn't speak to the press. It's no, it's like, like it's the here's where's Waldo, you know? Yeah, it's like whatever, or, or almost like Sid Barrett from Pink Floyd. You know, it was like the he was like whatever. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. But, you know, it's like there's not a day that I don't get some sort of message uh, from Facebook or whatever. Hey, where's Vinny? Have you talked to Vinny lately? You know, So it's like, yeah, Vinny's hanging out with your grandmother at the convalescent <laughs> home. You know, they're playing bingo right now. You know? <laughs> if you I don't, right I now, don't you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, all I can say is that, you know, I, I, I unfortunately for new listeners to the show, I, you know, he, Robert did the Vinny Vincent invasion. Vinny had left Kiss. He did this album, uh, Robert recorded the vocals robert absolutely despises the picture of himself on the back cover which i don't blame him because it was they really went all out on that and of course right now i'll be showing the picture um but your vocals on that and then of course then then the 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 video the one video has mark slaughter singing but robert but his vocals on that singing to my voice yeah yeah lip syncing to your voice and uh, but your vocals on that, and you know what I've always said, I've said to you in other interviews uh, when we've you know touched on Vinny, and I've always said this. I mean, your vocals are fantastic. I've always said this. I thought that album would have been a lot better if there wasn't so many damn guitar solos because there are some really great songs on that, and it just, I just feel like it was overkill. But if you really want to hear an insight on how that how crazy that album is, that interview I sent you of Bobby Rock. And it's out there, folks. If you want, uh, it's on. Oh, Netflix. I I was there. You were there, yeah. Robert was there. Robert <laughs> talks about the drum sessions and what he had. How many times he had to re-record the drums? Oh yeah, I know. Crazy, and I'm it, sure it was, you had. It was so frustrating to go through that whole thing, you know, and, and telling them that it's fine. Don't worry about it. But yeah. you know, it's like OCD, you know. Yeah, that's what Bobby was saying. Like he said, they would go through, and then all of a sudden it'd be like one kick drum was like a half a. Not oh, I know, even, I know. He's like, you got to go back and da 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 da. You just would, you just want to, After a while, you want to slap them in the head, and then after that, it's like, where's the baseball bat? You know. Oh, inappropriate Earl. He was on inappropriate Earl's uh, podcast. Who's actually a friend of my friend Fred, who does a Durfcast uh, podcast. So there you go. There's a little plug for everybody. Inappropriate Earl, Durfcast. Um, yeah, and Bobby does talk about you on, 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 in, the, in the Inappropriate Earl. Um, he talks very highly of you. And, yeah, well, yeah. I've always, you know, I, when I saw Bobby, I said, this is the guy. Oh, I yeah. Said, I, I told Vinny, I told whoever was there, I go, this is the guy, don't even bother, just this is the guy. So after um, he had played for, you know, an hour or two almost, just going through his drums, uh, rehearsing or, or uh, auditioning-wise, um, you know, he there was another, we had some more people coming in to, to audition, and I just said, Bob, why? Just, I just said, hang, this is going to be over really fast. Yeah. So, so um, you know, the other guy came up and it was like, okay, fine, we've already found the guy, and and it was him. He was, it was Bobby. Know, and plus, he is just the greatest personality, so easy to work with, so eager to just you know to do whatever needs to be done to make it great, you know, and 
and he's just uh, he's the best, you know. He just sounds you know, like a really cool guy, and he's a total pro. That's what he just comes off. As. And, and you know, he I I don't know if you read um, he did an um, he he wrote a, a story or, or an article or something about his um, his uh, I guess his anniversary of when he he joined Vinny, and he wrote this whole thing. Out. And it was fantastic read. I mean, he he's quite the writer. He I'm gonna check that out. I want to check. Oh yeah, that. he can he can write a book. I'm telling you, and he's so articulate, and I and I, I just love him. You know, he's just a great guy. And well, so bad you guys never got back always. together and put a band together. Well, that you was... know, I you know I'm I'm wrestling right now with what I'm gonna do next. Oh and really? Okay, because this will this will bring us up to date. Let's yeah. So now we're coming up. Now we're we're Robert, 2015, November 2015. You're wrestling with what you want to do next. Let's let's. Yeah, let's I mean, I'm I've been writing this. I've been writing um, you know songs for the next Sky album. Yeah. But I'm kind of wrestling with the idea of taking the songs that I've already that I've written and just have a lot of different players like have Bobby play why not have, have um you, you know Frankie Benelli play oh yeah because uh, you're pals with him yeah right yeah um I and uh and and uh, George Lynch play uh I wow. before I was with before I joined um um uh Journey oh Journey no before I joined Journey I was already Putting a band together and had already rehearsed like uh, um, um, like a week's worth of rehearsals with George Lynch, who Doc and fame of, for those who don't exactly. know, fantastic guitar player. Yeah, he's amazing. I mean, he's oh my just, god, dude. he actually he was up for he actually tried out for Ozzy a couple of times too. I think after Randy, whose uh, Randy Rhodes, uh, whose mother passed away yesterday. So, um, but he was like he was like pre Vinny. Yeah, he was shredding. I mean, he he played. I mean, when I when I was with him rehearsing with him, he was he was playing just like you know. Just, I never like like uh, Vinny or or Eddie Van Halen. I mean, he had he knew how to play like that. You know, he yeah. had the speed, he had the chops, he had he you know he's just great listen to the Dokken albums. Just listen to those Dokken albums. Right, like, right. Wow. And so, um, you know, I I ran into him again uh, just recently. hadn't seen him in years. He just he was just so funny telling the story about, you know, when we were rehearsing and how it broke his heart and everything like that. And, and, and it was just kind of funny. And then uh, I and then I've been uh, friends with um, Chips Enough from Enough's Enough. Oh, yeah, you can get him. And actually, you yeah. can also probably get uh, who's been a guest on the cafeteria and a friend of mine, Johnny Monaco, who's his guitar yeah, player. Yeah, and I know Johnny. Yeah, He's a fantastic And, you know, there's this player. guy named Greg Porter who's uh, um, he, he's, uh, an incredible drummer. He plays um, – he, he does uh, Buddy Rich's um, show, um, the big bands. He plays yeah, yeah. The, Buddy yeah. Rich, one of the greatest guitar drummers of all time I mean, Jesus. yeah and he plays buddy rich to the t like it's all written out oh my plays. god yeah and so wow. he's, a, he's another guy that lives out in chicago area and and um and there's a guy named uh, uh damian rogers who uh did the music for life of pi and he's and he just oh, produced great movie. Uh, snyder's last his new album that should be coming out soon so there's all these great players in that and i'm thinking about Maybe just grabbing all these great players and make sort of like a you know all star tracks. You know this song's done with so and so and so and so. And well, Robert, I gotta players. say I think it's a great idea. Plus, I mean it's great publicity. Plus, it gets. I mean, oh, here's the thing. Like, first of all, for you yourself, you have you know I've I've had John, I've had John Regan on my show, who's played with Ace Frehley's Comet. He's played with Mick Jagger, and now he plays in a band with, with Todd Howarth. And I said, you know, you're lucky because you you are part of the Kiss Army because you played with Ace and now you always and then you have the Rolling Stone and, I, and I've said this to you before and I'll say it again it's like you're very lucky because Kiss fans love you because you have a part with Vinny and Journey fans love you because you have a history with Journey so it's kind of like this album you, you, you're bringing in all these other pieces too so you I, to me if you want my opinion I think that's a fantastic idea 
I think you should do it. I feel like you're on a couch right now in the chair. <laughs> Robert, I don't know, how are you I, feeling? Should I pay how do you, you truly or should you feel? pay me? <laughs> All right, it's decided right now on Bob's Radio Cafeteria. My friend Robert, his next solo album, The Sky, will have the regular guys, but there are going to be a lot of guest appearances. We're going to have Frankie Benali. We're going to have Bobby Rock. We're going to get Johnny Monaco. We're going to get Chips Enough on bass. We're going to get George Lynch on guitar. Who else? Who else? Well, you know, I would ask uh, Neil if he wanted to play. And I'm sure he would. I'm just, and, uh, and I could get, you know, Dean, Ca- Dean to play drums. Dean Castronova? Yeah. 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 So, you know, I, I'm, that's what I'm kind of wrestling with. But the thing is, is like, see, I finance all my albums. So, you of know, course, it, of course. It, 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 and just financing the Sky albums, you know, it, it's expensive. Out, you know, 30 grand or so or more. Yeah. And, and so if I were going to do this, it, it would just, I, I would really have to, you know, get some deep pockets to help me out with doing it. And you would hope that the fr- these guys would like, could you do it like, for free, you know, kind of like. Well, yeah, I I think people would do it, you know, just to, in, in a in a sense, maybe for free or, or you know, if they need Hopefully. money, I give them money. But the main thing would be booking the recording studios and all the time and all that stuff. That's where the money would be. You know. We might have to just do the thing they do now, just mail the tracks to them. They record it at their no, place. No, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> no, you're like no. I want. Them. No, I. It's like, how can you sculpt clay over the phone, you know? Yeah, true. Well, if, well, where you? Yeah, I mean, the guys closest to you, um, you know, I mean, definitely. I know Johnny Monaco is always looking for gigs. He's actually, like, a while ago, he was, like, put out, like, I want to put a band together. And I was like, oh, oh I really? know. Yeah, he was like, and then I told him, I said, you know, Juan, uh, I said, Juan, Juan Crocier from Rat is trying to put together a band. I said, why don't you con-? So I put them together on Facebook. I don't know what happened to that. And then I was like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll message Johnny and say, hey, you know, Robert, you know, da 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 da. And he's a, fan, he's a great guy. And a, what well, a I know, I player. know Johnny. I, you know I, Johnny, I, yeah. I, so you yeah, know. I've run into him and Chip all the time. So, yeah. You know, you know I've, already, I've already talked to Chip about. Um, you know, coming down to his recording studio that he has in Chicago. Oh yeah, 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 and, yeah, 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 yeah. And checking one. it out. But you know, we've we've been talking about it, and uh, I've all I've been I talked to Ross Valerie too. Oh, cool. So, you know, yeah. So I, I I think it would be kind of an interesting project to do. You know, with all these different players and and I've you know and, and we've all had you know, got together in the past and, mm-hmm. and, and, and so we, you know, we know each other and, and thank God they have deep respect for me and I, and vice versa, you know. You know, it'd be really cool. I, I doubt this would happen, but you imagine how people would go crazy if you had one track where it was you, Vinny, Dana Strum, and Bobby Rock. Oh my God. I, don't, I, would, minus, not, I would minus the Dana Strum. <laughs> Mine, it's, okay, okay, so we'll have you, Bobby, and Vinny, and then Vinny can do, and then, you know, Chips and up. Mark Slaughter could play bass. That's Mark, <laughs> no, I don't think. <laughs> I, hear he's a good, I hear he's a good guitar player. Yeah, yeah, he strums a really good That's guitar. That's he started out. I mean, when he was with Vinny, I believe, um, he was a guitar player before that, with, you know, and then that well, was his own first band, his lead, band, like, yeah. front man uh, gig, you know. I guess that's and, like, and well, we can say with, Bobby Rock. With, him, with the thing with Slaughter is, I mean, I've I've ragged on Slaughter for many years. Yeah, so there's today. not that's not going to happen. But 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 the thing is, is I I recently heard an interview with him. Yeah. Uh, a couple of months ago. With Mark and Slaughter. I, and I listened to the interview, and my whole. My whole uh, impression of him and everything is changed immensely. I, I, I think he's a good guy. I think he took, you know, he took a situation where he was thrown in, and he went for it, you know. He's and, a young kid. And you can't, I mean, you, can't, you got to respect that. I mean, you know, yeah. you do what you got to do, and or whatever comes, you know, up. And uh, and and he has he's got a really great work ethic. Yep. And he's and he's and he's he's a good guy. I think he's a good guy. So there we go. He ever hears this, peace. If he ever hears this, um, you know, you have my blessing. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll 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 find his Twitter and his and his thing, and I'll say, hey, 
you're mentioned. I usually do this anyways. Anytime people are mentioned in my interviews, I always post it on their page to say, you're mentioned in this interview. So, yeah, yeah. That, and it's great for the cafeteria. But, you know, it, but, but when, you find, when, you, when you have people calling you up and telling you that the Vinnie Vincent uh, video is going to going to be on uh, on the air on MTV and you turn it on and you see somebody else to lip sync you to your voice. <laughs> oh, I can understand, Robert. I can a, totally understand. Kind of hard, your... It's kind of a hard uh, pill to swallow or, or not say anything, you know. But well, I just remember, years, I remember being, I just remember after being After all seven, these years, I, 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 I you know, I, 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 I understand what It's happened. water under the bridge. I mean, but I mean, I remember being 17 years old and this is pre-internet and I've said this to you before and it's like, I was so fascinated. I mean, it's funny. It's like, oh, Vinny puts out a new album. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Cause I, I, I really liked his work with Kiss. I thought the Lick It Up album was re- one of the best Kiss albums they had done in a long time, uh, blah, 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 blah. And then I, I start. I read a thing about, or you know, about you, and I was like the former singer of Journey, and I'm like, when the hell was that? Like, you know, again, this is pre-internet. It's not like nowadays. Right. Go like, yeah. Grrr. And I'm I, so 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 for many years, I was fascinated by you because I was like, how did he? When was he in Journey? I don't understand that. Like, what the right. hell? So, but I, so, but then, you know, of course, now I know, and I know you now, you know. So it's like it's it's really cool, but. To, you know, you know, it's just how things. It's just water, and then you see the video, and I'm like, oh, that does that doesn't look like the guy that's on the back of the record. Right. Well, you know, it's the power of the internet. You know, it's like yeah. when I occasionally get people send me pictures of me when I was on tour, which yeah. which is fantastic. But you know, back if people had um, you know phones, yeah, back then that took pictures. I have lots of pictures of me, um, uh, you know, playing, but there are hardly any, you know, pictures of me playing, no. a- because they're all done with uh, cameras, you know, real cameras. Well, so, you posted a really great picture recently of what, what was a venue in New York, and it had your name with Van Halen on the billboard. Yeah, yeah, we played at the Paramount. The Paramount, yeah, that was a really. I was like, oh, that's cool. It's a good pic. Finally, you know, pictures. Are I was more out. excited to be at the Paramount because you know bands like Benny Goodman played there and shit like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good God, Benny Goodman played here. You know, wow. Tommy yeah, Dorsey. There's... So if you had to name, so um, let's let's we'll start to wrap up now. Um, um, again, it's always a pleasure. You know, I, I love you to death. I think you're an amazing, amazing, amazing artist. One hell of a cool guy. And I didn't mention in the beginning of the interview, you have a distinction on the cafeteria, Bob's Radio Cafeteria. You, uh, Robbie Rist has been on my show three times, uh, the actor Robbie Rist. But you have a distinction even above him. You were the only person that's ever been on Bob's Radio Cafeteria in three forms. You were on Bob's Radio Cafeteria when I was at Berkeley Liberation Radio. You were on Bob's Radio Cafeteria when I was at FCC Free Radio. And now you're on Bob's Radio Cafeteria in my new format where I do it in a YouTube video. So congratulations, Robert. You are well, thank stand you, alone. Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll send you that check immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just your friendship is good enough for me. It's just, I, I really appreciate it. I, you know, I, I how much, support. How much support. is the next interview going to cost me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, today you wanted mashed potatoes and what was it, meatloaf, you said? <laughs> next, next time I'll, you get, uh, well, whatever next time will be, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, have, we'll serve you something else. We'll have, uh, I'll have a sashimi yellowtail. <laughs> <laughs> Couple this of is uh, California rolls. This is a cafeteria. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Robert, you are so awesome. Um, so, next Sky album. I love this idea. It's it, it's our, the seed has been planted, my friend. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm I'm just it's, gonna see how I can put it together. It's if it's an tough. easy if it's an easy way to do it. I wish uh, I was I'll, a famous musician. I'd play for free, but I'm not a famous musician. So a, a credit from... Uh, no, Bob's see, Radio. we can't have anybody play for free anymore. That's what's killed the music industry. Everything. I know. For free. Why won't they? Why can't people just like be like, I'm just, I just want to be on a rec. I don't... I, I, that's, with my band, the Clarences, we just, we're always just like, we give our stickers and buttons away for free. We're like, we're just happy to play. But I, I also know, know some but, people have to make a living out of it, too. And, you know, absolutely. So support your local musician and... Yeah, arts. yeah. Because uh, those those days just seem to be <laughs> way gone. gone. 
Yeah, Don, my bygones. Friend. Everybody thinks everybody's like permanently wealthy or something. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. That's why. Yeah, that's why you see guys like, you know, you see guys in their sixties still out there pumping away. Like, you know, you know. Well, you just recently saw Warrant. You know, I mean, yeah. Luckily, they probably don't have day jobs, but this is how they make their living. You know, they have to go out there and they have to play. And you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or Frankie with Quiet Riot. I mean, you know, he that's how he makes his living. He's out there with Quiet Riot. You know, the, he's the exactly. last original member. But um, you know what? It's like those bands and and like even Journey, for example. Um, yep. They're not going to do another. They're not going to go and, and and do another record. No. It's over. They just why? go out and play. Why? You know, why make, would you put out a new money. record? Why? Yeah. Why? Well, why would because you're an artist. And you and you and you want your product to come out, but when you have your product that goes out and it's stolen the minute it hits hits the airwaves yep. or hits the internet, it's over. It's so over. I mean, you know, you you spend all you know hundreds of thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars, and it's it's just for what you know it's yeah. for what. And plus, a but, band you know like what? Journey. I'm, even though it's for what, I can't help but do it. Well, because you know, you're an artist, dude. We said that, you know, said that in the very beginning. You're you're not just you know, it's like music bread you're an maker, artist. make bread. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, a band like Journey, though, you got to think is that you know, even if they made a new album, all the people want to hear is the hits, anyways. I mean, Billy Joel has not. I think Billy Joel has it right. He hasn't put out a pop album since 1993. And why is he saying? Because the climate you know, isn't conducive for it. It's all. It's all. Yeah. It's all topsy turvy. He's yeah, like, I want to go out on top. I don't want to keep putting out crappy albums. He's like, I, I never did, and I, and all people want to hear is the oldie. So 1993, he still tours, and I think it's a brilliant move. It's like his last album. Yeah, but you know what? You know, the, um, on the other side of the coin, there's guys like Bowie. Yeah, you know, exactly. He, he, he makes, he keeps making records. You know, yep. his next, his last album that he did, I really love. Um, See, so there you go. There's a Bo- There's a guy. There's a guy like Bowie, you know. But then David Bowie. Yeah, and then and then now he's he's got another album that's coming out, which is supposed to be really bizarre. But it's David you know Bowie. you, you got to look at you got to look at these people like painters. You know, it's like oh yeah, well they they painted landscapes and uh, fruit bowls in the beginning, and then later on they're just like so abstract and out there. And yeah, and that's what it's all about. You know, that's that's where I have that Picasso philosophy. You know. Unfortunately, you don't have that Picasso <laughs> plate anymore. But you got <laughs> all right, you. <laughs> all right. Well, listen, I'll let you go. I'll let you go. Oh, one last time, please give everybody uh, where they can find you. Okay. They can find me in their sock drawer. Oh, there you go. There we go. Right. <laughs> anyway, um, theskyofficial.com, robertflashman.com, robertflashmanart.com, and you can find me on Facebook also. Yes. And uh, always happy to uh, answer any questions. But you have to send me your questions on my board, not Messenger me. because I Yeah, yes, messenger. people. Uh, please don't send them messages. Do it on a comment, and he will... Robert will yeah. gladly um, uh, comment. Robert, again, thank you so much for being on the cafeteria. Always a pleasure talking to you. Um, I support everything you do. You're a great guy, and uh, it's just a pleasure. And you know, I support anything you do. So um, thank, thank you, thank so you. Much. thank you so appreciate much, it. Robert. I appreciate Bye-bye. your interest. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye bye, Bob.